What do you see as the main challenges for non-native English speakers? Obviously, for non-native English speakers, English itself not being the mother tongue, clear expression of their thoughts, results, and discussion in English is always challenging. Well, um, there is another common challenge to overcome, and that is the misconception. Good English will make good science. If you have wonderful scientific discovery, you have achieved the most important goal of your research, and you should be proud of it. Try not to be discouraged, even though your English is not fluent, since there are many ways to improve it. I think writing a good paper is challenging in any language. Uh, uh, you know, a good paper is not only about the scientific data, but it's also about uh, telling a good story. Uh, you really need to motivate uh, your readers. You need to um, make contact with other people that have worked in this particular area. Then you present your data, you present your results, and, and you know, you reach some conclusions you're trying to answer a scientific question, you need to pose clearly what is the scientific question that you're trying to address is. And uh, you know, a good paper is like a good story, so it's challenging for in any, any language. Of course, if you have to write a good story in a foreign language, it's much more difficult. But I, I think uh, you know, that uh, it's pretty much challenging uh, for everyone. Yeah, so the, the first question is about what are the major challenges uh, for non-native speakers in writing scientific papers. Uh, I would say the first one uh, is to be able to express and write precisely and concisely. The second one is to know the conventions and the protocols of writing for different journals. And the third one is to have interaction with the scientists, especially in the English-speaking community. Uh, I think it's probably similar for native speakers in some sense in that one need to, first of all, do qual top quality science. That's part of the single most important uh, uh, criteria. And also to be able to write for top journals. So that means you need to read articles from top journals and also know what kind of subject matter is of interest to top journals and to write in such a way that top journal editor and reviewers will find interesting and attractive. What steps did you take to improve your English language writing skills? Well, um, I think that adequate reading is the most prerequisite for good writing. Um, therefore, I have been reading all kinds of English books, newspapers, and scientific articles as much as possible. So what I have done over the years to improve my English writing skills is to first of all read a lot of papers, and secondly, to practice writing. So these can be in the form of a real paper, like in graduate school or as a postdoctor, or just sometimes just write and uh, as a way to practice how to write a good paper, and also get a critiques and help from people who are native speakers, from uh, colleagues, or currently I'm a professor, so I get a help from my graduate students uh, sometimes. But when at a graduate student or postdoc level, it's very important to get help from your own advisor or committee members or you know, any native speaker who ideally are scientists in the field, but it can be people who are not scientists, but who are just very good in language skills to help you out. What are the common mistakes that non-English speakers make? So one of the most common mistakes that I see non-native speakers do uh, is somehow not to match the, uh, the paper that they are writing, that they're working on with, with uh, uh, the, the journal that they're submitting the paper. Um, and uh, that is common, you know, sometimes I see a lot of papers that come through my desk that uh, it's almost like the authors in their submission letter, they are confessing that they think that the paper is not that good for my journal, but hey, let's try give it a shot. I think that's a really bad strategy. I think you, you know, you select your best uh, uh, papers for, for the best journals and, and when, you, when you don't believe that that's the case, then, then you know, just go for, for a different journal. Another thing that uh, uh, non-native speakers do a lot is they don't address the, uh, the, uh, the editor and explain him, her, why the paper is an important paper that should be considered for that particular 
uh, 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 journal. I see many letters addressed, editor, here's our paper, thanks. And I mean, editors need to be told that this, is, this paper is important, this paper is a good paper, for it's a good fit for your journal because A, B, C, D. And that, uh, that is a common mistake that non-native speakers do that I don't see often in people that are more in, uh, uh, attuned with the American system or with uh, our academic system because they, they, they know they need to, to, to rationalize a submission. It's not an automatic thing. It's not a robot sending the papers. And uh, I think that's, uh, that's something that, that can be improved, yeah. Uh, I would say some of the mistakes people make in submitting a paper uh, uh, are common to both native and uh, non-native speakers. But for non-native speakers in particular, I think that two things I noticed over time. One of them, sometimes people write articles that are too long, too long for the material in the paper. Conversely, sometimes the articles are too short for the material having the, uh, that's in the paper. I think the reason might be that sometimes people worry about uh, the article being too short. That's an indication that there's not enough material. So they try to make a longer, sort of artificially, so it's longer than what is needed. Uh, on the other hand, when it's too short, that might be a limitation due to language. And some people don't feel comfortable in writing a lot. So they thought the less they write, the easier it is. But uh, if that does not convey the whole message of the article, so both are not the best thing to do. So the article length should be commensurate appropriate for the article, for the material in the article. What do you ask your students to do when they're writing a paper? Well, yes, I ask my students to try to make their writing as simple and clear as possible so that readers can capture the essence and new findings of the research. Any jargons, lengthy explanations, French terms can potentially cause confusion or misunderstanding of the contents. That's what I usually tell my students. Oh, to write a good paper for uh, non-native English speakers, well, I, I will try. I, I will recommend that they try, uh, you know, to iterate over the paper. If the paper has multiple authors, to to you know go around and 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 iterate. That's that's what we do in in our, my group. That uh, you know maybe I start with a with a very simple draft with bullets, and then someone else. We'll start putting content on those bullets, and then the paper will go around, and we will check uh, each other, and we will check the paper many, many times. I think it's very important not to, to submit a paper that looks sloppy. I mean, grammatical errors will happen. That's OK. But, but if somehow you, know, you label figure two, figure four, I mean, that has nothing to do with language, and that's sloppiness. So avoiding any, any uh, uh, old sloppiness, is, I think, is very, very important. Of course, I pay extra attention when they write manuscripts to make sure they know the protocols. And the one best thing to do is, let's say we're writing an article for a particular journal. The very first step before we start writing, I re recommend to the student or postdoc to read articles from that particular journal. So that's the fastest way to learn about the protocol for the journal, because every journal has some different protocols. And of course, you'll take a little bit longer and maybe more rounds of editing from me. But sometimes I also, to help the students who are not native speakers, when they finish the manuscript, I ask them to give it to lab mates, group mates to read who are native speakers and get it polished on the English. Also, of course, I'll help them as well. So it normally it takes a few more rounds than with a native speaker to get a manuscript finalized. What suggestions would you have for non-native speakers to improve their writing skills? I encourage young scientists to learn not just the usage of English itself, but also the logic and style of scientific English. This can be done by critical reading of well-written articles in your research fields. When you are reading, it will help to look for Number one, the story plot and article structure. Number two, how the author delivers the concept and goals of the research. And then number three, how the author organizes the data, figures, and tables to draw 
discussions and conclusions. Keep in mind, it is important to consult guidebooks for scientific writing. I find ACS style guide, effective communication of scientific information by Anne Cogill and Lauren Garson, and another book called Scientific English by Robert Day, very useful. Writing skills. Well, that's, that's a tough one. I guess what I did is read, 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 and read. Uh, read a lot. Read newspapers, read magazines. Uh, scientific magazines is probably the best way to do it, uh, but I think that uh, I learn to write English that I am comfortable with by reading a lot of English. And uh, this is, well, when I, when I did this, there was no internet, but now with the internet, for example, there are places on the web which you can go and uh, they have these collections of links. Yeah, so there's a place on the, uh, on the web called Reddit that uh, what they do is they just uh, put together links to, to different sites and they have one for science, which actually is very good. And I look at it um, maybe every other day or so and then you click there, it takes you to a story which is written by a journalist. And this could be one of many scientific magazines, it could be an actual paper from an actual journal, but most of the time it's something written written by a journalist uh, that has digested the science and is explaining it to the general public. And things like that will really help improve your writing skills. Because when you write a good paper, you have to tell a good story. And a good story is told in simple words. It's told in, you know, it has a beginning, it has a, uh, and it has an end. And uh, it's not only about the scientific data, it's also about telling a good story. When you write an article, do you write in your native language first, and then in English? When I write a paper now, I, I, I write it in English. After 25 years being in, in, the, in this country, um, uh, then you know, English uh, flows easily for me. But there was a time, long time ago, where I, you know, English did not flow um, that easily. And then what I would do is not write the paper in Spanish, but I will probably organize the story. You know, as I said before, a good paper is about telling a good story, not only presenting scientific data. So what I would do is maybe organize my bullets in Spanish and then, and then you know, put content on them uh, uh, um, in English. I just write directly in English and also think English and write English. But that's in part because I've been in the U.S. for 28 years and uh, I learned a lot of these technical terms in English. So in some sense, it's more challenging for me to write in Chinese today, uh, in Mandarin, because all the training I had in science has been done in the US. And at the beginning, I would say sometimes I would probably think, you know, think in English, uh, Chinese and uh, translate some of the phrases or sentences. But for the most part, it only take maybe a few months or a few years, depending on the person, to be able to start to think in English, because actually it's easier that way. So at the present, I would say, all my writings are, you know, I, I start thinking English and writing English and of course do all the editing in English. What if I don't have access to the best equipment? Um, occasionally high quality science requires sophisticated instruments to acquire important data. Um, therefore, it is likely that the reviewers and editors think these are essential to judge the quality of research. So, uh, in such a case, I would recommend to get help by conducting research collaborations with those who have such instruments. I would say that uh, it's hard to say there's no effect at all, but I would say that it's not, the instrumentation is not the most important determining factor for deciding if a manuscript will be accepted or rejected. I think the foremost important thing is the science, the project. One could, of course, higher end instrumentation will help potential to do better science, but some good science can be done without high end instruments. And conversely, having high end instrument, instrumentation alone does not guarantee good science. Since I don't get to travel to international conferences and meet scientists, how can I suggest appropriate reviewers? Uh, the important thing is to recognize who are the active players in the field. And uh, from reading the papers, 
normally that's the best way to do. If you read papers in a given field, you should know who are the active players. And normally those sh should be the good uh, uh, reviewers to suggest. But of course, the suggestion is not to suggest all the popular names, because normally those scientists tend to be busy, and the chance for them to review is very small.